not, but I got a motor going bad on me. Oh well, that's the end of that flight. Okay, I've seen, uh, as suspected, one of my motors has gone bad on this. Um, the way to tell if you have a bad motor, first of all, it's very obvious you'll hear a loud squealing coming from it, uh, from the particular motor. But also, uh, when you try to fly, if you're in the air already and your motor starts to go bad, you'll notice that you're going to have to provide a lot of over control just to keep the quadcopter going in the direction that you desire. Uh, for, in, for instance, in this case, my right rear motor had gone bad, so while I was flying, I found that I had to get a lot of forward pitch on the uh, quadcopter just to keep it going forward. If I'd let go and let the uh, control go to center, um, it, was, it would start to go backward. Um, I had a hard time landing there as you saw in the video um, but again what you want to hear you look for is you'll <laughs> hear for is you'll hear a lot of uh, squealing coming from the motor uh, the particular motor that's going bad and also it won't it won't uh, turn as fast as the other motors if you put it, the uh, quadcopter on the ground and try to take off again say this is the bad motor which it is in this case the quadcopter will tend to tilt in the direction of the bad motor and start moving in that direction so whichever motor when you're taking off flat from the ground whichever motor that it tilts toward is likely the suspect motor that you'll need to replace um, to change this the motor obviously it looks like the first thing you need to do is remove that uh, canopy if you still have the canopy attached to your quadcopter um, I'll include a link in this video to show how to do that uh, right about now but after you remove the canopy uh, I want to show something that you have to pay attention to or should pay attention to is and that's the difference in clockwise and counterclockwise motors and how they relate to the quadcopter for the quadcopter uh, the V262 the clockwise motors and the, they determine clockwise as looking down at the back of the motor and it turning it and the motor turns so in this case if I'm looking down and the motor is intended to turn this way this is a clockwise motor now the clockwise motors on the V262 are the left rear and the right forward I recommend if you have a uh, a silver uh, marker like I do label those ahead of time uh, with you know clockwise and the right forward one clockwise and similarly the counterclockwise uh, propellers or counterclockwise motors are the left forward and the right rear in this case we're going to be replacing the right rear and this is a right rear motor now I'll show you how you can tell the difference other than the packaging that they come in from Banggood uh, there is a way to tell the difference and I'll show that right now this is a close-up of my left rear motor which is the clockwise motor as I mentioned before but what I'd like you to notice on this motor is the position of the solder that runs from the interior of the motor. It's on the left side of this hole. Notice for the clockwise motor the solder point coming out of the inside the case is located on the left side of the hole, the ventilation hole here on the motor. Now in a counterclockwise motor, which I'll hold up right here, notice that it's located at the top of the hole. Here, see if I can put it closer, closer to the other one here. But notice the difference. The clockwise motor is on the left side of the hole, and for a counterclockwise motor, that solder point coming out of the uh, ventilation hole is located directly above the hole. So that's how you tell, visually tell the difference between a counterclockwise motor, which is this one, and a clockwise motor, which is that one. Now the motor I need to replace let me rotate it over here, is the right rear motor, which is a counterclockwise motor. And again, notice where the solder point is coming out of the hole, on the top of the hole. And so I compare them, and yes, I confirm that this is also a counterclockwise motor. Now, to gain access to that motor, around 
inside there, if you look, there's a tiny screw. And that's the screw that holds the, the motor mount over the top of the motor. And that screw has to be removed. Oops. So find yourself a nice little hobby Phillips screwdriver and remove that screw. And place it in a safe place because you'll need it later. Okay, with that screw removed, all we got to do next is slide this cover backwards. Now, notice that we're going to have to do some soldering here. And paying particular attention, we note that the red wire goes to the back end of the motor and the black wire goes to the front end of the motor. Uh, one good thing to do at this point is to get yourself a sharpie. You pair the motors and note where the black wire goes and put a little mark on that sharpie or a little mark with the sharpie where the black wire goes so you don't forget. Uh, it would be very bad <laughs> to reverse those wires. <laughs> okay, so we got that mark. We'll remember where that black wire goes. So what we're going to need to do next, obviously, is to do some soldering. So uh, at this point, I don't have my soldering iron set up, so we'll get right back to this after it gets heated up. Okay, to make it easier uh, to do that soldering, it would be good to get this propeller out of the way. And to do that, you just notice that there's a little screw that uh, goes through the propeller and through the propeller shaft. Uh, just remove that screw. Simple to do. Hang on to that screw. Don't lose that screw. And then just pull up on the propeller from the shaft. And then reinsert that screw so you don't lose it later. It's a tiny screw. Easy to lose these things. Now, with the shaft, all you got to do is push down on it. Okay, I was going to show how to replace the uh, gearing, but that's a whole job in itself and it would make this uh, video a lot longer here. Maybe uh, next video I'll show that. Uh, but we're going to, all we need to do though, is push this, uh, the shaft downward so that it's out of the way. Okay, um, no, let me just uh, give a foreword here that I really am terrible when it comes to soldering. Uh, I have a hard time keeping my hands steady for one thing, <laughs> but uh, here we go. Uh, first, we got to remove this black wire. We'll, let's do that. And I grab it with a pair of uh, tweezers, and then I put the hot point here. And there we go. That wire has been removed. And let's move it out of the way so we we don't want to burn it. And I grab the next wire and touch and pull it away. And there we go, it's desoldered. And then we put our soldering iron down in a nice safe place, heat resistant place. And the next step we do is flip this upside down. And let me see if I can get some light here to show this. But there are, let me adjust the camera too. There are two little screws in here out of the way you two little screws that hold the motor in place one there and another screw located there um, all we need to do is take our screwdriver and remove both of these screws there it is there it is there on my magnetic screwdriver. I highly recommend if you don't have a pair of magnetic screwdrivers get them. They're, they're excellent for doing this small work. And then remove the second screw like so. It's still set in there but, but it's from withdrawn from the motor. And then all you got to do is after you remove those two screws just slide the motor out. Pops right out. And then taking note of how that slid out, noting that the black wire was at the, the end of it, and there's where the black wire's got to go. We're going to put the black end in first, or outward, and slide the new motor in. 
and with the new motor slid in all the way let me take our little screwdriver and screw that one screw back in take our second screw sometimes it's easier to go right through right through this hole here to reinsert that screw and there goes the second screw tighten them just a little bit just hand tighten it gently don't strip it okay so the motors in place so all we got to do now is the really the hard part <laughs> soldering resoldering unsoldering is easy but resoldering can be a little more difficult so and this time I want to try to route this wire well there's not much slack in this wire so I don't have much choice but I'm going to grab this with my left hand and solder with my right Here we go. Let's see if I can do this right. And I think I got it. Okay. That's the black wire. And now for the red wire. my left hand here and I think I got it too and one thing I want to make sure again is okay looks like there's no shorts so now all I gotta do is slide this cover back on find that screw that we put away previously that holds that cover in place also I'm going to unplug my soldering iron since I'm done with it and reinsert the, sever or the cover screw Again, just hand tighten it, not too much. Okay, and slide our shaft back up again, but again, push this bushing back into its place. Check the bottom bushing too that it's in place. Get our propeller, which we had removed, and line it up. Oh, wait a minute, let me remove the, that screw temporarily. Help me line it up. Line up the propeller with the or the hole in the shaft with the hole in the propeller and reinsert that propeller and get it screw put it on our magnetic screwdriver and let's see screw it into the shaft and I think we're about done folks And the next step is to test it out. Um, oh, actually, the next step is for those of you who still got that silly canopy, you're going to have to reinstall that uh, big canopy. But 
I recommend you consider leaving that canopy off. Um, again, the way I do it is I just use a silly Coke bottle with my Mebius camera always attached to it. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to install, reinstall it, you know how. I included the link to how to do that. So let's give this a try and see how it flies. Okay, let's see if this works. Yep, apparently it's fixed. Okay, now I am not going to fly this. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to fly this. What I'm going to do that's a brand new motor and my dog knows that I can't fly that right now so she's coming over here to get some water from her tray <laughs> okay resume um, that's a brand new motor and you really don't want to fly that hard with a brand new motor it has to be broken in so what I'm going to do with this battery with this full uh, battery is I'm going to run these motors as low as I can get it I'm going to start as low as I can get it, and then I'm going to use the trim button to see if I can go a little lower. And I'm just going to keep pushing down in the trim until the motors stop. And then I'm going to push one more up on the trim to get the motors running again. Now, I'm going to run these motors, especially that brand new motor, for a full battery at low power. Uh, the idea is that battery needs to be worn in. It's a brush battery. Those, those brushes need to be worn in. So I'm going to run this again uh, until the battery runs out at low power like this. Every few minutes I am going to stop it by pushing down on the uh, throttle trim button like so and I'm going to feel each one of those motors to see if they're getting hot. If one's getting overly hot where it hurts my hand I'm going to let it sit and rest for five to ten minutes and then do it again. Actually Sit and rest for about a minute is all you really need to do. And then start it up again slowly. Again, letting those motors wear in. And when it's done, you should be good to go and ready. When it's done, you should be good to go and ready to fly for your next battery. Okay? That's how you do it. Hope this helps.